I feel blessed as ever then. Uh, I'm the best I've ever been. Okay. So with the ask you how I feel. What's up? I, I, I'ma tell you I feel amazing. I feel blessed as ever then. I'm the best. Ladies and gentlemen, how y'all doing today? Wednesday, December 6th, 2023. I am in the building, ready to talk college football. Because a lot happened over the weekend. Not only championship weekend, but we have our college football playoff set. We have the, our New Year's Six Bowl games, which I'm getting to all that. But since it was such a big weekend, I couldn't I couldn't do this by myself today. There was, there was no way I can do this by myself today. So about a couple of brothers on here who know they football and they know they football very well. First up is a man who is known as the EP of all EPs in the podcasting world. This man, y'all see him on, you know, shooting lights out with me. If you see me on Snowman and Money, you see him do his thing. He's the one who does who does the comedic uppercut to everybody who's on the show. The one, the only. Cool sports with the Z, Cole Johnson. Well, it is wonderful to be here once again. Well, wonderful to be with you once again. And it is great to now uh, be adorned on bearing down the gridiron for the first time. I'm glad I'm, I'm, glad I'm here with you, man. Thank Appreciate you. Appreciate you being here. Got a lot to talk about, but I brought one more person in. Oh, really? Now, if y'all been following me when I do my wrestling talk, Y'all know this man. He is the man who came up with Monarchs of Wrestling, which I'm happy to be a proud of. He is the man who is known as <coughs> Mr. Eagle Elite himself. The fun the players call. Give it up for the cool man himself. Cool McCain. Here comes trouble. No trouble's coming. I already know trouble's coming. Soon as What's Sunday. Going on, Soon as Sunday happened, I was like, yeah, if I'm going to do this, I'm, I'm, I'm going to need my man Cool to come on because <laughs> I, I know how Cool feel about how this all went down. Like, I'm going to need him on here because this is going to get nasty. Oh, yeah. So, gentlemen, so, gentlemen, let's go ahead and start it off. We're going to recap championship weekend. You know, it's the big weekend that we all know. This is the weekend that Who's gonna make the name for themselves? Who's gonna get who's gonna fight for that final four spots that actually matter? That's the week it was in, it was championship weekend. And yes, I pit all 10 championship games, whether they matter or not. I pit all 10 of them. Okay. So we're gonna start with the group of five real quick. And then the group of five, we saw uh, the conference USA championship between Liberty and new mexico state liberty was trying to remain undefeated 49 35 great game high scoring game liberty remains undefeated put a pen to that because we're gonna get to liberty later on we had the match championship between miami of ohio and toledo they this is a second meet toledo won the first one could miami of ohio get it back which they did 23 to 14. boise state unlv in the mountain west when unlv had a home field advantage it didn't matter to Boise State at all. 44 to 20. They did not care whatsoever about UNLV being at home. And I guess that crowd didn't factor either. And speaking of crowds that didn't factor, the American Championship game, New Orleans, Louisiana, Tulane trying to go back to back American champions. And then some you walked in and said, uh, not so fast, my friend. And then the Sun Belt, Troy versus Appalachian State. I'm going to talk about that game more in depth with that because it didn't involve a certain team who should have been in that championship game. But Troy wins it 49-23. It was a breakdown how it all went. Now, gentlemen, here's my problem when it comes to the Sun Belt, okay? There's a team in the Sun Belt that was 11-1. and 
But guess what? They couldn't play for the conference championship. You know why? Because of the NCAA. And the fact that they were converting from the FCS to an mm-hmm. FBS. For those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, I am talking about James Madison. Now, you gave them some justice by you letting them bowl. But they should have been playing for the conference championship. Because they were riding high. They were doing their thing. And then they took an L to the Appalachian State. But Appalachian State is one Appalachian State that we're known of. So, gentlemen, how do y'all feel about that? We had a conference championship game that wasn't really about the best two teams. You mean like we have a um, we gonna get to that? We gonna get to that. The best teams. We gonna get to that way. So, in other words, what you're telling me is James Madison got Florida State. That's what you're saying. Yeah, he. he, But basically, what happened is uh, the the NCAA did NCAA things. Mm -hmm. This is what they do, and even in even in conferences that people won't. Uh, rail against and, and talk ill about, uh, they will do the same thing to the smaller dogs as you do the big dogs. What I say goes, I'm daddy, you all suck it, and gotta live with it. And it's messed up. But this is how it is. Do, 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 you, do you think the East of LA was happy that Ampelance State went in there and beat James Madison in James Madison that week? When college when college game day went there, you think they was happy when we when they did that? Yes, yes, they were happy because we have seen in recent history they don't like the small dogs being undefeated. And oh, we're we're, we're not talking about Liberty, are we? <laughs> no. They also don't like ACC teams being undefeated. <laughs> but the thing is, they don't like the small dogs. <laughs> Cool taking shot. No one be gonna get that. Oh yeah. Well, I know cool taking shots. So I, I'll, I'm, I'm gonna take mine later. But um... <laughs> oh, that's plenty more. Mm-hmm. Oh, I know. I know. But but the NCAA they do not like the small dogs having a run of whatever schedule that's that's set in front of them, and they don't like seeing teams that are undefeated and 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 they may not bring the eyeballs. They may they may not have the the talent that 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 brings in the ratings, and they may not uh, they may they may not pack a stadium. They, the NCAA doesn't like that. They, they don't like they don't like teams like that. They they want they want you to remain small. They want you to they want you to stumble and stumble and stub your toe against competition that's supposedly on their level, and that's just how it's supposed to be. You know the little the little man the little man stubs your toe against the little men. The big dogs eat the way the big dogs eat. And that's how it goes. Mm-hmm. So now you see you see SMU beating Tulane. I said put a pin in that because that was Tulane was there, had a chance to be the best group of five, but we'll get to that. Here's the power five. As you can see here, y'all see the scope is gonna go right through it right now. Uh Oregon. 10 point favor, right? Well, you would have thought they would have had uh, um, the motivation of revenge. Ten point favor, right? Dan Laney, ten point favor, right? You you you, you let Washington escape in in their own, in their own home in, in the regular season, right? You, you got your rematch, right? Yeah, and lost by the same margin. Played a very yeah. similar game. So played a very similar game. They lost by a field goal in uh in in Seattle. Oh, look at that. They go to Vegas, they play a similar game, and they lose by a field goal in Vegas. Shocking. Shocking. We play for wins, not for clicks. Are you going to hold that against Dan Lanning all the rest of his time as Oregon coach? Yes. I question if if, if that's true for everybody, right? I do question if that's true for everybody. Because Oregon's coach did have a whole lot to say about primetime. A lot of those got chopped up. And made into what? Clickbait. Well, see, here, here's the thing. Here, here's the thing. Mr. Lanning, 
should not pop off at the mouth and say things like that when the university in which he coaches has 800 different uniforms. I mean, oh, the, cool. it's 810. I mean, they just released 10 more. That's what I'm saying. They have 800, they have 800, they have 800 different uniforms. I mean, the whole the whole football program is all about being clickbait. Eight hundred different uniforms, eight hundred different helmets. You know what? These two gentlemen are gonna laugh at me because I'm gonna I'm gonna say a line that that I normally don't say. Give me this damn camera. <laughs> Dan Lanning. Okay. You said we play for wins and not for clicks. Directing that at to Colorado and Deion Sanders. Well. And when did you do that? I hopped on Snowman in the morning and Cole would vouch for me. I said, wait till two weeks. What was going to happen in two weeks? They took their butt to Seattle. Cole, you just said, what happened in Seattle? Uh, they lost by a field goal. They lost by a field goal. Okay. You since then you've been whooping on everybody on the schedule. Mm-hmm. Beating everybody down. Including Oregon State in a big rivalry. You made them look stupid in Eugene. Yes, he did. Yes, yes, he did. You got your rematch. Mm-hmm. And what did you do with the rematch? Hey, lost by a field goal yet again. Got both nets sitting there. Ty always said, looking down like, so as my defense gave me the ball back, this game over. But at the it defense. Might have even, it might have been a tear or two in his eye. I'm not sure. His face paint looked a little runny. I'm not sure. That was after the fact he learned that he wasn't getting the ball back. He trusted the defense to do one job. One job. to stop fixing one time for me. Give me the ball back, and we're going to go take this win. Y'all can even give him the ball back. You know how I know? Y'all didn't punt. Now this man here, Bo Nix, who is a Heisman finalist, by the way. Now I'm going to get to the other ones. Pretty much lost the Heisman because y'all couldn't give him the ball back. Pretty much. He lost the Heisman and he won his fault. Now, I have to point out that there were some um, three and outs by said Oregon team throughout the game. So you could technically say he had opportunities. He didn't capitalize on them. Oh, okay. That's cool. And, you know, I'm not going to recruit what cool saw. That's, that's not, that man knows his football. Now, uh, let's bring us. But they should have got the ball back, though. They should have got the ball back. You're right about that, though. I just, I just wanted, to, I wanted to just put the other side out there. But they should have got that man the ball back. Yeah, put the other side out there, but uh, that off that defense of 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 Mr. Nixon, they gave up 34 points, though. Now, if they gave up 17 and and they had and they had the opportunities and, and whiffed, then yeah, I'm totally 100 percent with you on that. And I'm not saying you're wrong, brother. <laughs> but that Oregon defense gave up too many points, like they did in hey, Seattle. Both of them defenses gave up too many points. <laughs> oh yeah, both did. No question. No question about that. Yeah, the only team y'all actually gave thirty two was freaking Washington. He did it twice. Mm-hmm. Everybody else couldn't even sniff thirty. It's yeah, something about that matchup, man. You know how it be. There's always that one team that you just can't figure out. Well, I mean, put a pen in that one, cool, because you did a little foreshadowing on that one. Uh, Cole Johnson. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to be kind. I'm going to let you take the ranks of the Big 12 championship because uh, I feel obligated to let you pass that one. Well, okay. So you had Oklahoma State who um, people were upset because they were hoping we were going to see a rematch of the Cotton Bowl uh, or the Red River rivalry or Red River shootout or whatever you want to call it. Uh, the game normally in mid-October that takes place in Dallas between Texas and Oklahoma. Uh, people were clamoring for that. However, there was a problem because the cream and maroon decided to go ah! in Stillwater. So, well, we didn't get a chance to have that. 
Oklahoma State took care of their business, although they had to hold on by their skin of their teeth to beat BYU to get there. And then Texas boat raced them in 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 in, in Gerald World to the tune of forty nine to twenty one, and the game wasn't even that close. It was like what thirty five to seven at half, or thirty five fourteen and a half. I mean, thirty five fourteen and a half. You know, it, it, it was it wasn't even a contest. And and looking at it, I knew it wasn't going to be because I was like, oh, and then Taylor made for Texas to whoop. They, they went, from 30, went from thirty went from thirty five to fourteen at halftime to. 42 to 14 going to the fourth quarter. Yeah. So, yeah. So, you know, Oklahoma State was a an opponent tailor made for Texas to whoop. And so I was like, mm. the and, and I'll throw a little bit of foreshadowing for what we're going to talk about later. My thought was, hmm, I don't think Oklahoma State is, is a big enough name. And I don't know if they have a good enough resume that would probably help Texas win and get further than where they would like to go and what they would probably be projected to go because it would be basically them beating on a little brother instead of getting revenge against an opponent that beat them. Although I just have choice words for, uh, for one Mr. Uh, Steve Sarkeesian. I think he must have turned down a couple of those wines, uh, one too many that weekend, but I, I digress. And uh, just twelve and, and one, and, the, Texas when they, they won the game, they ended up being twelve and one, and they sat pretty and hoping and wishing and praying that they would have their prayers answered Sunday. And just for the sake of this show, I'm not going to uh, go at a certain team in that conference that's also joining Texas into the SEC. I'm just going to let that one go. Well, 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 I, I can do it for you. It's uh, 4.34 p.m. where both Playmaker and uh, Kuma McCain are, and OU still sucks. I'm sorry, continue, sir. Oh, my brother. Testify! <laughs> and I did say uh, Texas and uh, another team is coming to the SEC, right? You did, yes, sir. Uh, and this is where the fun begin. <sighs> oh, we get to the SEC championship, yes. Atlanta, Georgia. It's a it's a rematch that we all wanted to see. Kirby for Smart and Nick Saban year. going at it one more time. Yeah, for a full year. Uh, Georgia, number one team in the land. 29 straight wins. We're talking over two years of winning. And the last thing that beat them happens to be the Alabama. Guy. And it was in the SEC championship game two years two ago. Years prior. Right. Mm-hmm. Oh, what a day this was going to be. And by the way, before I dive into the game, did y'all catch college game day? Because uh, Pat McAfee had me rolling when he made his pick. Unfortunately, I didn't catch it. I, I, I would have loved to say I did, but I didn't get a chance to catch it. Cool. I caught pieces of it. But Pat McAfee is a wild individual. Yes, so even is. though I didn't hear exactly what he said, I'm pretty sure that it was very ridiculous. He was, he was singing the Georgia Bulldog song, or Mantra. I think he I heard stopped. part of that, yeah. He stopped. Turned back and said, give me Alabama. <laughs> Had Desmond, had Desmond her hysterically laughing, Kurt out his seat. <laughs> and the guest pick, I forgot his name. He was like, oh, what, what just happened here? And he like, you don't know where to go from here. <laughs> yeah, job. he got stuck between a rock and a hard place. Yeah. Good job, Pat. So Pat may be great job. I love Pat. Pat had me rolling on that one. Mm-hmm. Now, and we get to the all the money. That he took from all the other guys that got fired. Now we get to the game. Ouch. No comment. Uh, <laughs> Georgia struck first, seven nothing, and then uh, Mr. Kuba came. It became road tie from that then for it. Your response to what? How Alabama took control of the SEC championship game over the number one team in the country. Oh, we have some. Can you hear me, cool? Can you hear me? Yeah, we got you. We got you. Go ahead, brother. So, 
I mean, when I saw this matchup, I was like, this is not going to work out well for Kirby Smart two years in a row. You're not going to beat uh, Papa two years in a row, right? You got Papa last year. Papa coming back to give you the sword, right? Hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. Um, whoa, whoa, before you continue. So you got Papa two years before, two years ago in the national championship game and then got Papa again the, the very next year in the SEC championship. Right. So you know, you know from the time last December happened, Saban basically said we beat in Georgia as soon as the new recruits walked into the practice on the site. Time. On site. On site. Georgia getting whooped on site. You know on that site. is what Saban said to Alabama. Nick Saban said, if y'all don't beat Georgia, all of y'all going somewhere else. I'm firing <laughs> everybody. I'm going to do a Deion Sanders thing if y'all don't get the job done. All coaches, all players, even the water boy gone. Everybody. <laughs> everybody. Nick Saban, look, Nick Saban said, I don't use a transfer portal. Lose this game and see what happens. Because <laughs> what? Did you not see the first? Did you not look at the opening drive? It was like, well, dang, Georgia just went down the field like it was nothing. Oh, Did you see Nick Saban over there looking like a, a, a overripe tomato after that too? <laughs> and that's all they took. They was like, yeah, we might need to tighten this on. We might need to tighten this up. And tighten up they did because Georgia, Georgia didn't even score the rest of that first half. Man, Nick Saban was over there looking like uh, uh, Dave Chappelle doing the print skits. We like, eh, eh, eh. <laughs> 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 See, ladies and gentlemen, this is why I brought them in here. But shout out to Alabama. You you beat the team who you last leap. You're the last team to beat them, so you gave them that loss. And that loss and that win by Alabama became very primitive. So, so wait, man, just to refresh mm-hmm. everyone's memory, who did Alabama lose to? Um, I think Cole Johnson is most suited to say that answer. Yes, they, they lost to a team they say hook them horns. It was back in September. It was in Tuscaloosa, and they lost to them by double digits. 34-24, I can tell you the score. I just wanted to make sure everybody got the the backstory, right? Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. that's going to play into things. So I have one other question, uh, Cole, that you probably have the answer for me for. Well, that hook them horns team? Yes, they also suffered a defeat this year. Yes, Who did. took out that Hook'em Horns team that you were speaking of? Unfortunately, I can I can answer that question. It's the team that I picked to win the Big Twelve. Unfortunately, okay. it's, the, it's the scourge of the Big Twelve will now be the scourge of the SEC come 2024, Oklahoma. Okay. All right. So I, 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 I'm just trying to add the story together for everyone because you'll understand why you should pay attention to these questions I'm asking here soon. You 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 already heard their point of view when we get to that point, and you're gonna you're gonna see why I said what I said all last week. Well, you're gonna see why I said what I said too. Oh, I know, I know, but I I, I I mean, I feel you. Like I say, I feel. You. But right. <laughs> <laughs> Love this man. Love this man. All right, we got two more games to get to. Oh, the Big Ten Championship game. And as soon as I say that, I appreciate your code. Yep, I knew it was him. I knew it. As soon as I say that, I knew it. I knew it. Oh, 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 oh I'm sorry. I, I thought you was reading a bedtime story. Playmaker, I'm sorry. Oh, good Lord. Oh. 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 Come Shots on, fired. Man. Did you actually think I was still the chance in this game? Really? So when I saw that they got shut out, I'm like, not surprised. I just, I just want to know how many times they cost the 50-yard Like That's what I want to know. Oh my God, have mercy. I just want to know how many times they cost the 50. I was like, I was getting sacrificed in Indy. <laughs> We knew this going in. Whoever won the Big Ten West was a sacrifice. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Whoever came out of the Big Ten East. It just so happened to be that number two team who's involved in some stuff that I'm going to throw in there later on that somehow people have been forgetting about. But um, oh, first day oh, memory. Oh, I'm going to throw, throw something Michigan-related about what's going to happen later on, later on, too. 
Oh yeah. So so um, but yeah, we 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 knew Iowa weren't gonna do nothing. We already weren't gonna stop them. I, no. Maybe Jim Harbaugh took it easy on them. Say, you know what? We we already up. We already up. It's eighteen nine. They ain't they ain't gonna catch us. Yeah. So we we just gonna take it easy for the rest he of the week. He's up on the second half. Yeah. Yeah. And then it was the ACC championship game. Louisville come back off that ridiculous loss to Kentucky. And then Florida State, who escaped Gainesville. Come to find out, face backup quarterback was concussed in Gainesville. So they go to a true freshman, a third string quarterback for this game. Most people was looking for Louisville to have some type of, what's the word I'm looking for? Success. No, 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 no. I mean, that too, but it's another word I'm looking for because they came, they came up with, I mean, an ugly loss. A loss that people scratched their head about. It was like, really? Kentucky? Some extra testicular fortitude? Yeah. You know, you lost to Kentucky. Yeah, looking for, yeah, passion. You know, you, this is supposed to be your biggest arch rival, and you uh, talking about Louisville, and you screwed the pooch. At home, by the way, it was in Louisville. Now listen, to me. Yeah, see, yeah, yeah, let's see what happened was Louisville rolled the helmet on the field. They figured, and they're at home, at home too. They figured, oh, this is nothing. Kentucky sucks. I mean, look, I know they've been they've been feeling hot. They've been feeling their hot oats as of late. They've been ranked, and but this year it's not been all that great. This should be nothing. And then they get they get beat down. Kentucky and Cole, um, Cole didn't hear me say this, but Cole heard me say this. I said that Kentucky lost, hurt it, Florida State. Now we get to the ACC championship game. We see this team defense. You only gave us six points. The only defense that played better was Michigan, but that was for obvious reasons. <laughs> That's like the the Iowa Hawkeyes is the Pittsburgh Steelers of college football. Oh, wow. The Iowa Hawkeyes might be the Carolina Panthers. Are you saying that the offense is so inept that you would think that Iowa's offense along with the, the Steelers offense is um um peewee worthy? Hey, they wear the same damn colors. Oh, wow. That's they look damn the same. They play the same. They have a good defense. That offense is mm, hot garbage. Yeah. So we see this game. There's half. There's half the people in the country. Florida State's. They got the thirteen and zero. They did the. They did what is hard to do in football, no matter what level. Wow. They went unblemished. Oh, but and they did it. The it's other side, however, is a beautiful part of it. Quarterback. A power five conference team <clears throat> ran the table. With a third straight quarterback in the championship game. And the other side of it, this game is unwatchable. Well, let's be let's be completely forthright. And Cool could probably say this a whole lot easier than the than the two of us. Because he is basically where this conference is headquartered. The whole conference is unwatchable. Except for maybe a couple of teams. And, and, and that can vary from year to year. And then, exactly. And the, te- and the teams that actually are watchable varies from year to year. Yeah. So it, it's it, this game was unwatchable. But Florida so- State. Did the, the, they did the job. Yes, they did. So, conference championship is done. And now, let's go ahead and get this out the way. Yeah. And uh, I went six and four. Oh, well. Thank a lot, Oregon. And uh, yes, Cole, I did the unthinkable. I ended up picking Georgia. Well, that's your fault for picking uh, I think Oregon. I, Oregon. That was on you. <laughs> well, it, well, cool thing about this. I knew Oregon was going to lose. Cool. Th- think it this way. When I did my conference picks at the beginning of the season, oh, you picked Oregon the the the, the 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 two that were remaining was remaining made the conference championship. So I could either switch it up, or I can stick with the pick. Hey man, there's times where you got to say, you know what? Maybe in my haste 
to overhype certain players or teams, I made the wrong decision. Let me go ahead and fix that. And there's times when we stay with our picks. So what so, I'm getting here is that you stay with your pick and you didn't make the correct adaptation. I did you got all not, that information. I did not make the correct pick, especially thinking Oregon was going to come back and have some and have something for Washington, knowing they should have won in Washington. And apparently not. And then uh, this is what cool Mr. Cole Johnson's going to get at me because I used to I'm usually the one that says if you have beat Saban apart the pre- previous season, he's coming back for you. I picked Georgia to win the conference, and I didn't change when I knew what they were playing all about. <laughs> but see, it's understandable because I think all of us were caught in how the team how the team looked. Uh, not even not even when they finished playing Texas, but when they went to Tampa and they played uh, uh, South Florida. When we saw that, and we were thinking, okay, so they're barely inching to uh, to win games there. And they have no idea what starting, uh, what quarterback to start, <laughs> who to start. All right, this is not going to be the same type of Alabama team as before, and it actually wasn't. But the thing was, however, Iver Saban got to his boys' uh, heads to say, "Look, just be one point better than your opponent." It worked. I told you what he said, Cole. If you want to oh, be yeah. Alabama next year, you better win this game. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, and oh, oh yeah, it was that, and then yes, we are going to get to the SC Championship game, and we're going to be Georgia because you know darn well that is the team that is going to be there when we get to Atlanta. Yep, and you better beat them. <laughs> they will did. Your scholarship. Yes, and you they did. Them. Overall, I finished off sixty-one and twenty-seven. Okay. The extra point. Fan vote picks that was done. Well, it was the final one was the week before in week 13. 10 and 3, Cole. 10 and 3. Okay. That's good for I don't know what game these people are gonna pick. <laughs> like I have so so cool. What it did, what I do was so I have this num I have the number six games, the big six games. Then I let the people vote. Yeah, you let them the- vote and they pick the other one. I'm gonna pick you out, sir. I'll be lurking. You know, I'm, a, I'm a lurker. I'll be lurking. Me going 10 to 3 in games, I don't know what I'm finna pick. Whew. That's good. Very good, sir. Very good. All right, so that is the recap of Championship Weekend. We're going to take a break, and when we come back, let the arguments begin. <laughs> I'm just, just going to put it like that. Let the arguments begin, okay? It's going to be a lot of argument going on because a couple of gentlemen are not happy with what took place Sunday before one o'clock. Ignit. Mother. Bro, we'll be back. I'm just going to wait. I'm not. I'm just going to wait. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another edition of Cowboys Talk. The Dallas Cowboys got exactly what they deserved. Let me say that one more time. Because you know it's true. The Dallas Cowboys got exactly what they deserved. Dak Prescott is overrated and he shouldn't be paid. Okay? And the same thing with Pollard. I mean, Pollard breaking the tackles at that 57-yard touchdown run. I mean, we needed that big time. 33 points in the fourth quarter. Let me say that again. 33 points in the fourth quarter. And that's off of four turnovers committed by the Colts. See, at one point, and the fact that at the end of the third quarter, it was 21 to 19, and the final score was 54 to 19. Now that, ladies and gentlemen, that is completely unexpected. Cowboy Sock is available on all streaming platforms, including Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Amazon Music, and YouTube. The Playmaker Spot is sponsored by Liz. Locker rooms by Lid. Shop hats and official sports gear at Lids. Lids, the leading and number one destination for hats, gears, and everything that moves you. Make it a perfect shop for fans to find official sports hats, merchandise, and gears. Represent your team, your town, and your style with a snap hat, adjustable, fitted hat, or beanie from thousands of college and professional teams. Browse the very latest jerseys and t-shirts for the best teams out there. 
Liz has officially licensed professional and college sports teams apparel and hats featuring the hottest brands and trends. Shop online or visit one of the 100 stores across the country. Lock them by Liz. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Brand Down and Grid Iron, the college football player selection fallout. We week out the championship weekend. Now it's time to get to the fun part. You ready, gentlemen? Let's do it. All right. So the college football playoffs are official. Shout out to Adam Pierce for that. <laughs> Here are the four teams. Number one, the Michigan Wolverines. Number two, out of the Pac-12, the Washington Huskies. This is I think this is the second time the Pac-12 has made it into the college football playoffs. Hmm. I think Oregon was the other one. And Oregon was the other one. Yeah. Number three, Cole Johnson, take a bow, because your Texas Longhorns are in. And number four is the grandfather of college football himself, Mr. Nick Saban and the Alabama Crimson Tide. Listen, now we all know, know this. We, we all know how to. We all know this. We we saw what happened Sunday. If you didn't saw what happened, you was on social media, so you you knew it. that was the talk of the whole what three days. How a team like Florida State at thirteen and zero and the conference champion left out. And another thing is, the team that was number one in the country for pretty much the entire season went from one to six. Mm-hmm. Now. The main issue is the Florida State Seminoles. 13 and 0, won all their games. Won the ACC. And they were left out. <clears throat> now, before I let the gentlemen. Uh, let's get ready to rumble. I'm sorry about that. Now, here we go. This is the from the commissioner of the ACC, Jim Phillips. It's unfathomable that Florida State, an undefeated Power Five conference champion, was left out of the college football playoffs. Their exclusion calls into question the selection process and whether the committee's own guidelines were to follow, including the significant importance of being an undefeated Power Five champion. My heart breaks for the time of the FSU student athlete and coaches and their passion and lore fans. Florida State deserves better. College football deserves better. Close quote. He wasn't the only one to chime in. The head coach chimed in as well. You don't have to do this one, Cole. I'm just, I'm just gonna paraphrase oh, this one. Okay. I'm just gonna paraphrase. He said he was hurt for his players. He's hurt for the school. He's hurt for what they have done, doing all what they needed to do, going out outside of conference and scheduling and scheduling a tough opponent. It does, it's not right. But here's one of the main points that is where I started to feel bad for Florida State. It's whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on. Whoa, 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 whoa. All right, ladies and gentlemen, for those who are unaware, the Playmaker is an ardent Florida Gators fan. You actually felt bad for the Seminoles? Yeah, because this this wow. guy, right? Actually, no, before I get to that, this is what the commissioner had to say. And the reason why they didn't pick Florida State. Open it up, Cole. Oh, quote. In the eyes of the committee, Florida State is a different team without Jordan Travis. Corgan said. One thing, one of the things we do consider is player availability. Our job is to rank the best teams. And in the final decision, looking at what it looking at it was Alabama at four and Florida State at five. Close quote. This is a full description of what he said, talking about how Alabama looked against Georgia and how Florida State looked without Jordan Travis the final two games. So all right here. All right, boo. All right, Griffin took the Twitter. I'm not going to read what he said because he went in. When you have a tweet that long, you you feel some type of way. <laughs> Ain't no point in me reading it. Right. He was not pleased. Well, not only him, Booker McFarlane wasn't pleased either. And Richard Sherman definitely wasn't pleased. I almost thought Richard Sherman was finna cuss a few times on Undisputed. So, 
So mm -hmm. as we uh, see what's going on here. Wow. Here, here is the criteria for the committee. Oh. Conference championship one. Strength. This is no particular order. This is not in a particular order. That's a so conference time. championship is one. Strength of schedule in head to head competition. You know, mm -hmm. competitive outcomes between common opponents mm -hmm. and the bottom one. The bottom one, you see? Other relevant factors such as unavailability of key players and coaches that might affect a team's performance during the season are likely will affect its postseason performance. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, if I can see if I can get the other slide up, that's because the shots kept coming. Because um, after that happened, Mr. Peyton. One of the star defensive players for Florida State decided to enter the transport portal. Mm, now that, yep. that's he, evil. He entered the transport portal. Uh, let me see. And then uh, where you at? This is where I start to feel bad. Because you see this guy. This is Jordan Travis. This is exactly what he said word for word. Mr. Johnson opened it up. Whoa. Devastated. Heartbroken. And so much disbelief right now. I wish I broke my leg earlier in the season. So y'all could see this team is much more than a quarterback. I thought results matter. 13-0 and and this roster matches up across any team in those top four rankings. I am so sorry, no nation. Now, before y'all go. Close quote. The fact that Jordan Travis had to sit here and say and lie. He wish he broke his leg earlier in the season. Yeah, the fact he said the fact he typed that and lied. I'm sorry, my bad. That's that because he's gonna he he's basically labeled the reason why Florida State's not in. That's a bunch of bull. I'm sorry, go ahead, sir. Look, man, Cole's about to go off. I'm telling you right now, Cole's about to go off because this is what the committee the, you heard me read it. Mm -hmm. Florida State looked different without Jordan Travis. Mm -hmm. So this is what I'm going to do. Cole Johnson, I'm going to give you the camera. All right. So this is the problem that I have with, uh, with all of this. NCAA, you have proven once again, you have no balls. You have no balls, no B-A-L-L-S. Why do I'm saying that? Because you all had to come up with this man B pan B rule saying, okay, well, to qualify to be until this year's over, the top four teams in the college football playoff, you got to be a conference champion. You got to have a strength of schedule that's strong. And now you introduce... If there is a player or a coach that could affect the the postseason performance of the team, we weigh that in consideration. So the CFP commission on the CFP committee chairman said that this was uh, the, the the overarching reason as to why Florida State was not going to advance. Here's the funny thing. That chairman happens to be affiliated with Florida State. And, and five other people too. And five other people on that on the committee as well. Here's another funny stat about this. So the NCAA, they went into last year's offseason. They said, you know what? Why don't we get to a 12 team playoff for this season? Guess what? The conference who decided to, uh, who, who now is griping about the process, said the, about that. The ACC was against it. Nope. Them idiots said no, and they were the deciding vote. And they were the deciding vote to boot. So, in, in, some, in, in, in some respects, the ACC got exactly what they deserve. Now, 
the conference got what it deserved. Now, the team did not. The conference did. So basically you're saying the ACC beat themselves in the ass without knowing it. Yes, they did. Oh, yeah. Gotcha. They, 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 yeah, they, they cut off their nose to spite their face. And this and that's what makes this actually, that that's the beautiful part about this whole debacle. That. Now, let's get to the ugly part. You know that fourth rule that the committee judges by? You see, that rule was supposed to be instituted for Michigan. Oh, I ain't forget. That rule was supposed to be instituted for Michigan because, <clears throat> because the, the NCAA did not have a good oh, when the work comes in balls. They didn't have the balls to actually suspend Harbaugh for the rest of the season. They just suspended him for the last three games because they figured. That no, that wasn't even them. That was the Big Ten. Oh, I know it was a Big Ten, but but the NCAA didn't even decide to, to spend him at all. But but if the Big Ten actually were to do that, but the Big Ten figured, well, you know, when by the time you get to Ohio, uh, Ohio State, even though it's going to be at home, you have your assistant head coach leading the team, they should get the L. And unfortunately, 30 to 24, they did not. So now the NCAA feels like fools because they did not discipline Michigan the way they wanted to, but they did not have the balls to. And, and guess what? The the committee can't do nothing about it. <laughs> and 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 they have this rule that was instituted for one program. They instituted it for another one. Now, that is what the commissioner, that's what the committee chairman said, that basically that uh, because of Jordan Travis's injury, they will not be admitted into the college football playoff. Well, then let me put this, I'll, before I continue, let me put this out there right now. Whoever gets the highest win trophy for this year doesn't deserve it because if, if the absence of one player is that important to where you actually have a Power 5 conference champion who went undefeated not be playing for a national championship, and the reason is that was what you give. Jordan Travis is 2023's Heisman Trophy winner. Period. But y'all, again, this is NCAA. Y'all don't have the balls to do that either. So let me continue. This is what would make it a whole lot easier for you all, you dunces in the committee. You hide behind this BS rule of saying, well, you know... You won't have all the players necessary. You're going to start a third-string quarterback. I'm going to break it down for you. That's that. That's cute talk for all the all the mental midgets. What they're saying is, if we were to actually have you advance, you won't pull the eyeballs and you won't travel. That's basically what they're saying about Florida State. And we actually want the, we actually want a team that can bring the eyeballs to the TV sets and bring the fans to the stadium. Because the biggest star you got on that team is Mike Norvell. Which Stephen A. Smith raised a wonderful point. If Deion Sanders was in Mike Norvell's pace, Florida State would be in the CFP. And don't give me this, well, Florida State has started a third string quarterback. They're starting to back a quarterback. And that's the reason why we couldn't admit. Eight years prior, you had a program that started... A, if I'm mistaken, third stringer. Sorry, a third string quarterback. Not only did they beat Alabama, they go on to beat Oregon in the national championship. And I get before before you continue. Here's the difference in that scenario. They played Wisconsin. I don't, give a, I don't give a crap if there's an a, a, <laughs> there's an exception. No, I'm, I'm telling just telling you because I know what you're talking about. I don't give a crap. The Big Ten championship. Cordell Jones first start and they just beat the brakes. They beat the brakes in Wisconsin. I don't give a crap. If there's an exception. The, 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 as they laid out the rule, this is why Florida State isn't advancing. But you had a team which had the similar thing happen to them. You invite them into the playoff, they win the whole thing. Uh, and if you all don't know, that team is Ohio State. And yes, you could say, well, also, another exception, you had Ezekiel had to run for 200 yards in both the uh, con- uh, national semifinal and the championship games. And he won he for 200 yards in all three games. And, and, uh, and the Big Ten championship. I don't give a crap. It looked it pretty. Again, I do not give a crap. Yeah, I know. Because 
if you're going to set a president already for a team that did not have their starting quarterback to go in and wreck shop, you cannot use the excuse of, well, this team is not going to have their starting quarterback, and that's the reason why we're going to exclude them. Hogwash. You see, because this is the reason that you should have said CFP committee. And I'm going to give it to you straight with no chaser. You should have explained to them this way. Michigan, they beat a team in Ohio State, was ranked number two when they played. They're now ranked number seven. Let me see. Washington, they beat Oregon. They were in the top ten both times they played. They were number five the second time they played. They finished, I think they're now ranked eighth. Texas, they have actually, in terms of where teams have finished, the most impressive victory of the season because they beat Alabama, who was third when they played them. Actually hurts them now because Alabama's fourth. And then Alabama, they beat the two-time defending national champion. And they went from number one to six. What am I pointing at here? The top four teams that you did put forth into the TFP, they beat a team in the top 10. Now, the only team that at any point in time that Florida State played that was in the top 10 would be LSU three months ago. But where did they finish? They finished 13th. So, you have Michigan, the most impressive win they have is Ohio State. You have Washington, the most impressive wins they have are against Oregon. Texas, the most impressive win they have is against Alabama. And Alabama, the most impressive win they have is against Georgia. The most impressive win, even now, that Florida State has is against LSU. And LSU finished ranked lower than all the teams I just mentioned. Oh, no, by the way, Michigan also beat Penn State, who finished the year number 10. And I think when they played them, they were ranked number nine. So that is what you should have said. The strength of schedule and the signature defining resume win, that's something the four teams that we put forth had. And unfortunately, and it's through no fault of Florida State, but it's the fault of the teams that they played. That is what you didn't have. And for Florida State, what messed them up, and I keep saying this, this is what really messed them up. The big time win that would have propelled them to go on to play for the CFP in the CFP would be when they were in Death Valley, when they played Clemson. And if they were to have that victory, which they did get 31 to 24, if Clemson were to have straightened up, flew right, and actually had the season that they normally have had the last, the previous 10. Then we would say, okay, well, Florida State, they have a signature win. It came it, it came against Clemson and Clemson. But you can't say that. So I get Florida State fan. They get down on my throat. They said, well, whoa, 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 wait a minute. They, they beat Duke. They were ranked. They beat Clemson. They were ranked. They beat LSU. They were ranked. They, they beat Louisville. They were ranked. Okay, fine. I already talked about LSU. Louisville. Beat them when they were ranked 14th. They're now 15th. Clemson, they weren't even ranked when you played them. They are now ranked 22nd. And in Duke, they're ranked 16th. They even they, they finished not even on the ranking chart. Point B, the conference that did not want to have a 12-game playoff, the conference that thought that they were swinging with the big boys like the SEC, the Big 12, they learned quick, fast, in a hurry that they are the stepchildren of the college football power five landscape because they made it that way. And how is it bad for the bad for college, bad, uh, college football? You have a conference who really thinks that they're bigger than they are. And unfortunately they had to pay the price because they led one of their conference teams to slaughter because they got to understand that. Yes, this is the meritocracy. You all do not earn enough money. You all do not bring enough eyeballs and you all do not have that talent. And it is unfortunate that Florida State had to learn the lesson, yet they are a power five conference champion that went undefeated. 
That is what you should have explained. And I'm not saying that's right. And I'm not saying that's fair. I'm saying that that should be how you all have done things. But not bring into it, well, you're missing a starting quarterback. And because of that, we don't want we want to not have the sixty five to seven butt whooping that TCU took at the hands of Georgia in last year's national championship game. After they put their foot up Michigan's spine. Yes. After they after they scored fifty on Michigan. Now uh I'm a, I'm gonna bring Cool in by saying two words and he's gonna fire off. Cool, I'm gonna put it plain and simple for you, sir. And the two words that the committee should he should he just went ahead and use that we all know. Florida State didn't have enough style points. Let's go ahead, sir. So I completely agree with uh Cole's statements. We're gonna look at things from a different angle here. So when the committee should have came out and said what Cole said they should have said. What Cole so graciously forgot that they should have also put in there, which is why they didn't say that, Cole. Oh, what the worst loss that Alabama has is to Texas. The worst loss that Texas has is to Oklahoma State. And the worst loss that Florida State has is to nobody. So you can't use that argument, right? And I said Oklahoma. Yeah, sorry, I said Oklahoma State. Um, so here's what's funny to me about this entire t- this entire situation. Florida State won a game with their backup quarterback. It looked pretty solid. Florida State won a hard fought game with their third string quarterback. Second string quarterback was out with a concussion. So the ACC championship game is played what three, four weeks before. They would have played uh, the college football playoff championship. So mm-hmm. guess who would have been back by then? The so backup the quarterback. quarterback. At least the backup, yeah. yeah, the backup who looked pretty good when he played, right? Didn't get a lot of chance to see him because that's why you have a starter. And Jordan Travis, the talent that that man had, you're going to keep him on the field. So you're punishing a team because you're trying to insinuate. You won't come out and say it because testicular fortitude is the furthest thing from anybody on this committee's mind. So you wouldn't come out and say the reason that we're doing this is one of the things that um, playmakers say style points, and another thing that they don't want to admit is we're doing this based on what you look like against Louisville without taking into account the fact that your third-string quarterback who won't be playing if they were in the college football playoffs was playing. So here's the other funny part about this. We don't reward teams for having monstrosities of defenses anymore. We don't say, man, this team may have some troubles on the offensive side of the ball without Jordan Travis. But Jordan Travis never played snap at defense this season. And Florida State's defense is ridiculous. And before I go any further, I want to make sure that everybody's watching knows I am a Miami Hurricanes fan. I hate Florida State to the core of my being. I hate Florida to the core of my being. I hate them both. I wouldn't be mad if their universities burnt to the ground. Right is still right. And the right thing to do is a team that has went out scheduled. Florida State cannot control that LSU wasn't as good as they should have been with Jaden Daniels this year. LSU should have been better, but Florida State cannot control that. All they can do is years ahead of time, because keep in mind, Florida State wasn't able to go this past summer and say, hey, uh, Alabama, y'all want to play? Hey, uh, oh, Mitch, y'all want to play? Hey, whoever. you schedule these one-on-one matches a couple of years out, right? Because you have to make room in your schedule. So they went out. Got the best game that they could from a team they thought was going to be good, played them, and beat them. Because that team did not live up to the expectations, and maybe Florida State exposed them. Maybe the fact they went out and played Florida State first, Florida State exposed them. They put on camera the ways that you could beat this team and help other teams be prepared for them. But we're not going to give Florida State any credit for that. We're not going to give Florida State any credit for anything. We're going to, the committee is going to try to make it seem like. And ironically, half of you have ties to Florida State. You're going to try to make it seem like Florida State went out and beat a bunch of Division II and Bush League teams. Very disrespectful to the teams that Florida State played, right? It is very difficult, as you saw, because only three Power Five conference teams was able to do it, go undefeated. It's very difficult to do. Very, very difficult. Do we reward teams for playing and doing things that are very difficult? Only if we want to. 
And I have one other question I need to ask Cole, you and Playmaker. Do we know of anyone on the college football playoff committee that's clairvoyant? Nope. I can't think of anybody. So who in the <clears throat> who on God's green earth do you think you are to tell a team how they're going to be able to play without a guy unless you can see the future? You judge people on what they've done. You don't say, oh, we don't think you're going to do this because this guy is hurt. Depends on what you think. The whole college football committee right now should be fired. They should have been fired after they put this out there. You've got NFL players saying this is trash. You've got other college players saying this is trash. You've got coaches saying this is trash. You've got fans of teams that hate Florida State saying this is trash. You're garbage for what you did. You're trash. You're garbage. I will never have respect for the college football playoff committee again until all these pieces of doo-doo are gone. The college football has to be better. You have to have a system where you reward teams for perfection. I don't care how you feel about the perfection. You don't go in the NFL and say, oh, the Eagles are 10-2, and two, but they had a lot of close wins, so we're going to make them the fourth seed. We're not going to give them the number one seed because we feel like Detroit's played better. We feel like Dallas has played better, even though the Eagles have a better record. That's what they did. And the funny thing is they've never done this before. I remember a couple of years ago, if I'm right, wasn't it, was it Oregon State who got in, I want to say? I can't remember exactly who it was. Ohio State the first year. Ohio State. No, 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 no. I'm not talking about that. There was an undefeated, I think it was Oregon State or Oklahoma State team a few years ago that got in, and they got pummeled. I mean, pummeled and embarrassed. No, Michigan State. I know you're talking about Michigan State. Okay, Michigan State. The guy that they, they got in the they college went, football they ran up against Alabama in the semifinals. And got pummeled. So they were one of the four best teams that year? Did you go into your future bank that year and see that they weren't going to win and change it? No, you didn't. You made this up this year. The other reason that the rule was put into place about players and people not being available and being available is so teams who had quarterbacks that missed games that got hurt, um, a la Trevor Lawrence, I think it was year three, where he missed a couple of games and they lost one of them, but they still made it because they said, oh, if Trevor Lawrence was playing, they would have won, so they still put him in. That's the other reason they put that rule in. What they did was they took their time for weeks and said, we got to figure out a way, y'all, to pull this off. If this happens, we got to figure out a way to pull this off. What are we going to do? You know, and, and it, it was a chain reaction. The number one team in the country got knocked off. And yeah. All it was chaos a chain reaction. All chaos happened. Yeah, it was a chain reaction because Georgia lost. So that made Texas's win over Alabama look so much better because they beat the number one team in the nation. Mm-hmm. Right? Alabama looks so much better because they beat the number one team in the nation. So it's funny that the effect was Texas got boosted to three. And Alabama got boosted to four. So what you really told us was even beating Georgia, Alabama shouldn't have really been in it. But let's be 100% real and let's be 100% true. Screw all the things that were said. Screw all the numbers through the, this team will look better than their team. And this is this is, this is that. I was watching before they were doing the, the, the picks, before they were revealing everything. Guess who hopped on stage and said there's no way that the SEC should be left out even if Georgia wins. The SEC commissioner who was there. So what I want y'all oh, to there's, there's a list of people we can put on that list, on that on that one. <laughs> but what I want but I want you to understand is they were not gonna have this and not put an SEC team in it because they are garbage. Everything that the committee has told us over the years, I've never believed. You can go back three, four years, watch episodes of Play Call of Sports Talk Show. And play called sports talk.com forward slash live. They're all there. Oh, yeah. Tell you what I said. I always have said SEC gets preferential treatment. They're going to find a way to get an SEC team in. And that's what they did. The SEC did not earn their way into the championship. They were gifted a birth over you know Florida right. State. And here's the funny that's thing. That's the truth. So piss on, piss on the SEC. Piss on 
the college football committee, and piss on the NCAA, NCAA as a whole. You're all garbage. You're all trash. Don't ever come to me again and talk about the best. You don't care about the best. You care about who you want to swab. You care about who you love, and you don't care what anybody else thinks. It's going to get you one day, and when it does, I'm going to be there laughing, sipping my tea. Uh, my yes, buddy sir. Steve Box is a big Florida State fan, uh-huh. and he was responding to Cole when, when Cole was saying about the signature wins, but it's not Florida State's fault that which Clemson yeah. decided to fall off and LSU decided to fall off. Which, which I did say. I did say that. So, but but that, me, but that is but but the committee looks at that. The committee looks at the, how they rank when they play and how they rank when they finish. Now here's the funny thing on what, there, but that's how they do it. Here's the funny thing what Coop McCain said because when we had this we had this debate last we had this debate last year. Right? Thank you for having that mic smoke, bro. Ooh, that was beautiful. This is I had what, to comment down a little bit. I actually had yeah. more to say. I had to comment so, a little bit. Cool, so Coop McCain. Cole Johnson, Snowman, Brian Snow, and a host of others, right? Around the same time, what y'all was like, they're going to, the committee going to find a way to put Alabama in the game. They're going to find a way to put Alabama in it. They're going to do it. They're going to do it. I came out and said, you know what? If TCU loses a close game and a bit to a championship or win it, they're in. And then you can ask, you can ask Mr. Cole Johnson, Oh, our people was coming at me like I'd said something mm-hmm. religiously wrong. Matter of fact, I think cool. I think cool saw a couple of those. Remember that cool? Because I came, I was like, "TCU gonna get in." They thought I said something wrong. Oh, for Alabama, you must be. From what the committee has been saying this year, TCU is gonna get in, and I and I actually put it in in order too, right? Cool. I put it in order. Sunday came about. Cole, what happened? Georgia one, Michigan two, TCU three, and Ohio State four. <laughs> cool. Did you hear? Did you hear Alabama come out of cold mouth? Did you hear Alabama at all? So I told y'all Alabama was gonna get in because TCU lost in overtime in the Big Ten championship game. All right. They smoked Michigan, and then they got smoked by Georgia. Who did they get smoked? And then we come to this year. And then this is why I brought Koo McCain on. Koo was not ha- he was not happy with what I was saying on Snowman in the morning last week. He was not happy at all. And I sat here and said, I don't think Florida State gonna get in, if, even if they do go in the field. Well, playmaker. Let me ask you a question. Riddle me this. In the history of the of the college football playoff and the BCS, right? Those two mm-hmm. entities. Please name me one time where an undefeated team, when there's four or less, did not get in from a power five. None. Conference. None. Right. Until so this year that is zero. Is the that is the reason why I said this is impossible, playmaker. They wouldn't go back and have the audacity to say, you know what, we're going to just piss on everything we've done up until now and change the rules to fit what we want. But guess what? I was wrong. I apologize for being wrong. But I will never again in my life have any faith in anything to do with college football. But I think think what happened was I think Kool might have misunderstood with me by me saying that as me Saying it's the right thing to do. I never said it was the no, right no, thing. No, no, no. I didn't, I didn't think that you thought it was the right thing to do. No. I never thought that. No. But what I used to <laughs> say, and, and Cole Johnson, no, I pay attention to what the committee does and how the chairman comes on and how he words it, which gives me an idea. I got an idea what they lean in at. Jordan Travis, okay. When when he came out and said, we look at everything, after the Jordan Travis inch, I'm like, that don't sound good for Florida State. And, and you know what was funny about it, playmaker? Mm-hmm. You know what was that real, like, you know what was the biggest slap in the place for Florida State? It was basically them taking their uh, collective meeting, just slapping it across Florida State's face. We're going to put you at number four. We're going to put you in the playoffs before stuff starts. And even if you win, we already know we're going to piss you. Yeah, and we're still going to drop you. 
even with a W. So, and That's I knew it. I'm like, I'm saying, I'm, I'm saying here like, mm, they still have four. And, and Cole would tell you this. I was like, Cole was saying, don't, 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 don't get too happy because y'all, because y'all at four. And it's a community keep you at four. Don't get too happy. Y'all gotta play Louisville. And how y'all looking that game is gonna determine, especially if Alabama beats Georgia. Did I not say that, Cole? Yeah, you said that. Well, here's the thing. Wait, wait, wait. You're punishing them for the third string quarterback having to start because the second the string quarterback yeah. got hurt at the end of the of the floor of the game from a dirty hit. Yeah, I know. Because when you hear me, so you're punishing like, them, and you see, yeah, you're like, punishing that's, them. That's, that's, that's not the that's third not string playing. That is ridiculous. Like, that's, that's not possible. They can't. That, that's unfathomable. Just trying to tell you. <laughs> but and 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 before before I continue. I'm not saying that Florida State did not deserve to be there. I actually believe they do. I totally believe they do. In fact, Playmaker, Playmaker can tell you, I said my Final Four would be Michigan 1, uh, Washington 2, Florida State 3, Texas 4. That's how I think the four should line up. And I think an NCC team should not be invited in because I don't think an SEC team gave me enough reason to say, well, one of them deserves to play for an answer championship. And here's, and, and here's the thing. And I'm glad Steve put this in the chat. You mean the rankings that the NCAA just randomly decides at the beginning of the season before anybody plays? Oh, we hate those two. Oh, we can't stand yeah, them. I wasn't, I wasn't talking about those. Hey, hey, I was talking about the college football them playoff them. ranking. Steve, I was Steve. talking about the college football playoff ranking Steve, the week before the championship games. I already, you already know I don't like that crap. Steve, it's ridiculous. And I agree with you. It's ridiculous that they do this at random. Because it it, um, it it gives it gives credence to an argument from from you know from your fan base saying, well, wait a minute, we did beat a team that was ranked in the top five, but the committee is saying, well, yeah, this was long before the CFP rankings got out because well, right. we don't do the CFP rankings until November. This game was played in September. They don't they don't do the CFP rankings until after Florida and Georgia. That's what I'm saying. So it's in November. You know, because if I'm mistaken, Florida, Georgia, they played last Saturday in October. So yep. they, they don't do it until November. So you have this game with this team ranked in the top five in September. And you all would have the right to say, well, we beat a, t- a team that was ranked in the top five. And that's why I said, yeah, they count, w- uh, they count when they ranked them and they count even more so when they finish, which to me, that is unfair to the team that they are judging. Because it makes you think about, okay, well, the team that you are ranking has some think say about this. and sway over a strength of schedule. Which, yeah. Think about this, Loco. You, think about this. Mm-hmm. If you say we're not going to do rankings and we're just going to let this idiotic committee which I decide who's going to be the top 25 it for the college idiotic. football playoffs, mm-hmm. it's going to be every SEC team. And a couple of teams from the other conferences. That's oh, all you're gonna have. Oh, oh. So, so what have I? Uh, I think you may have heard me say this, uh, playmaker. What have I called the CFP? <laughs> the SEC Big Ten Invitational. Pretty much. If you win the Big Ten and SEC, you get that. That is what I've called it. I've called and the other, it, I've called and the other, the last and the other three conferences is battling for two spots. Mm-hmm. If they lucky. Yeah. I have, ca- I have called the CFP the SEC Big Ten Invitational, and it upsets me, and it's going to be even worse now because you're probably going to have four or five teams from each of the Big 12 and the Big, t- uh, and, and the, and the Big Ten and the SEC cl- uh, clout up the 12 spots that you want to have starting next year. I got a quick bit of uh, news for you guys, an ACC guy. So there there was talks, I think, there today. The Big 12 and the ACC are talking um, a merger by 2031 and a partnership starting next season before that to kind of get the teams acclimated to play each other, schedules and, you know, building new rivalries and everything. So we could see a merger between the Big 12 and the ACC. We see that. That could put the better teams in the ACC in a position, if they could be Big 12 teams, of course, to, um, you know, to get in. So that could make this new conference by 2031 actually have about as much sparkle and power as at least uh you know the big team i mean maybe not uh maybe not the sec because i mean they uh, yeah, it, yeah it, I tell you, the ACC, ACC, the needle 
they move the needle, unfortunately. And Steven says, watch the ACC <laughs> and, and Big 12 champ will be the only teams from those conferences in the 12th so, team. Playoffs. I'm going to tell you, I'm gonna tell you exactly, what happened. That's exactly what happened. There's one more thing, one more thing y'all forgot. That's exactly it says they're going to 12, the, the top group of five teams will be in there as well. well I'm a, um, well, I'll tell you this right here. What will happen is you'll get the champion, if this were to happen, right? Theoretically, you'll get the champion in, and then you'll get one more team from the conference in. You'll probably get like that team that had maybe one loss, but they didn't get to play in the championship game because they lost to like another team that ended up winning the championship. So they didn't get to play them because they're in the same division. Because mm-hmm. they'll probably go back to the divisions if they do this. You know, the ACC's division is like right now, mm-hmm. but um, they'll mm-hmm. probably go back to the divisions. So you go mm-hmm. back to the divisions, then let's say Florida State ends up on the side with just a throw a team out there, Colorado, right? Mm-hmm. So say both of them are undefeated. And then Colorado plays Florida State and loses to Florida State. Uh, Florida State goes on to the whatever the new conference is called, uh, the ACC 12 or the big ACC, whatever you want to call it, you know. And they win. The team that lost on the other side probably has two losses. Just throw it out there. So we'll take Florida State because they're the conference winner. And we'll take one more just so we don't get grief. And they'll probably take in this scenario like Colorado, right? Um, you're still going to get th- at least three. No, four. So eight of those teams are going to be from the SEC in the Big Ten. In the Big Ten. In, in the Big Twenty. Yeah. I agree. Eight of those teams are going to be from there. So if you can get two of the other four spots, because remember, there's not going to be a fourth Power Five conference anymore because the Pac-12 is the Pac-2. Yeah, Pac-2. Yeah, 12 Power 12 is gone. Yeah. So let me bring a little cold mentality in here because when I saw this popped on my phone, I thought of Cole Johnson the right boy. So not only is Florida State mad and Rightfully so. There's another there's a person in Florida, Cole Johnson, that is also Oh awesome. Lord. That's Ron DeSantis. Oh Lord. oh Lord. The governor of Florida is actually going he actually is asking the legislature to give Florida State a million dollars so they can sue the college football playoff. <laughs> So, Paula, when you were saying in your in, in your rant of, of, of a lot of people who were upset, cool, you could add the governor of Florida on that, too, because, well, let's understand, if you all don't understand, I know Playmaker does, he lives in the state, and, and, and cool, of course, intelligent guy that he is, I know he knows, the capital of Florida is Tallahassee, and where is Florida State? Tallahassee. This ain't mentality, so I can't. So I can't go the wise uh, FA route. Yeah, and, you don't want to go that route. And you just might hear him go off on this on the next episode of Mentality. But go ahead, sir. Well, Ron DeSanto, sit your ass down. <laughs> Ron DeSantos, this is what you just don't. No, just don't. Stay your Stop ass out of this. Yo. You already have several no problems in the state of Florida as it is. Yeah, have several seats, Ron. I just won several. Take you full five and just take her and sit in. Don't even get up. No, no. Well, Stephen, I know, I, I, I know. The Santas has been beefing with Disney. Actually, that that beef has been going on for a little more than a year. I'm talking about in courts a little more than a year, and it started even before then. So yeah, I know that he has a he has a beef with Disney, and unfortunately, what he has to what he has to understand is Disney is the number one in terms of uh, in terms of money. Uh, the number one in tourism and the number one in, in employment. They 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 give Florida the most money. So yeah, you have that. But to me, this is this is such a political ploy. It's not even funny because he got called up by Donald Trump by saying, "Well, <clears throat> you have Florida State who got snubbed, and you got D, you, you got DeSantis who he called D sanctimonious who can't do a thing." <laughs> and so he responded by saying, "Well, let's." Less a lot of million dollars to give the Florida State so they can sue uh, the CFP committee. How you going to sue them, you idiot? Get out of here. <laughs> See, now, this is... This is this is the, the main conversation when it comes to the CFP is best teams, not most deserving teams. Okay? So how you going to sue them over something that's subjective? Stay your butt in politics and stay out of college football. Wow. Now, before I go off, let me move on. This is the final <laughs> rings. 
Mm-hmm. We already know the top four, Florida State five, Georgia six, Ohio State seven, Oregon eight, Missouri nine, and Penn State round up the top ten. Okay. Well, you got your Oklahoma in there, your LSU in there, your Oklahoma State, Iowa. Right. Pretty much right. Mm-hmm. I want you to look at, keep an eye on 23 and 24, though. Okay. That would be Liberty at 23 and SMU at 24. Correct. Now, here's the playoffs slate, New Year's Day, Rose Bowl, Alabama, Michigan, 5 p.m., 8.45, down in the uh, city of New Orleans, Texas, and Washington. Sugar Bowl, baby. Now, the New Year's Six Bowls. Missouri versus Ohio State in the Cotton Bowl. Friday, December 29th, 8 p.m. That's going to kick off the New Year's Six, right? That early thoughts on this. You got an SEC and a Big Ten matchup. The way that the committee loves on SEC, they're going to cheat for the SEC. So you're basically saying that Ole Miss and Missouri are going to, oh, no, sorry. Missouri's going to win the Cotton and Ole Miss is going to win the Peach. Okay, gotcha. And the Peach Bowl is down in the, in the ATL, home with the SEC. <laughs> Ole Miss and Penn State. I'm going to be honest, cool, cool. I hear what you're saying, but um, I have said this about Penn State. James Franklin don't know how to win big ones for whatever reason. Yeah, he he can he he can choke a big game. He knows how to do. That but then well. again, he playing Ole Miss, so the other guy who who chokes in the big games is Lane Kiffin too. So somebody gonna choke who is gonna be. Yeah, and Lane Kiffin knows how to choke the big ones too. But he does not. And that's why it's gonna come down to the referee play, and the referee play is gonna be like when the Chiefs play in the Super Bowl. But, but Lane does know. How, but Lane does know how to win one of those big games every once in a while. Yeah, Franklin doesn't know how to do it at all. So that's the cotton in the peace bowl and then orange bowl. <laughs> you talk about funny. You talk oh, about the, commi- you the talk com- about consolation prize. Oh. You know, this is what I want to say. You know, I'm mad at the committee for what they did at the top. They should have did this at Liberty. That's trash. That is garbage. That's dumpster fire type play. That's wrong. And they know that's wrong. But they don't. Care. That's the problem. Because uh, you were correct, they just wrong. But they don't care. So um, yeah, care. Florida State, you went undefeated and you lost. And sorry about it. In your consolation prize, you are gonna be home. You get to go down to Miami, South Beach, and all that stuff. But we bringing Georgia down there too. So here's the problem I have with this: you put Georgia with Florida State. The reason why you don't put Florida State in the CFP is you saying, well. They possibly would, we possibly would lose money if we were to have them play in the national semifinal. Uh, you possibly could also. So you put them in, 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 the, in the highest games, not in the national semifinal. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. So you that's all stand, BS, you, you, that's what I'm saying. All so, BS. You, so you still stand, and I'm not saying they will really, but you still stand to lose money and cool set at best in the highest ranked game that is not the CFP. Steven says, make that to make me. sense to me. Steven says, explain to me how Florida State isn't better than Alabama and Texas, but they're better than Georgia. They would go to straight schedule. That's what they would do. They would, they would say the victory. And I'm not saying they're right, but that's how they would explain it. They would, to they, that's how to they would explain me, it. this is committee. This is the committee opportunity to say here. Y'all want to know? Play Georgia and let's find out. Mm-hmm. That, that basically is it. So Alabama has a win against Georgia. Texas has a win against Alabama. But here's the thing, man. And, I, and if I'm you're saying Florida that State, is faulty as all get out. If you're Florida State or you Georgia, mm-hmm. what benefit do you get from winning this game? You don't get anything. Neither neither team does. That's the that's, that's the mess part. Neither this is like it's a benefit. This is like playing for a third straight a third place trophy. That's what I'm saying. This is this like not being in the not, this is like not being in the gold game or the silver game. We're gonna put you in the in, in the bronze game. This is Seriously? the biggest consolation prize we have ever seen in college football right now. It's right college football. Yes. It's and, my, and, and this is dirty. why I, and this is why I'm not the pepper piss on college football. 
college football playoffs. And this is why I love and this is why I love the NFL more than college football because of crap like this. Yeah. And remember, I told you to look at 23 and 24 because the third, third ranked team is Liberty, Liberty, the highest ranked group of five team. And they actually get to play in the New Year's Six Bowl. They get to go to State Farm Field in Glendale, Arizona for the Fiesta Bowl to face off against Oregon. They don't get to go. They are getting fed to Oregon. That's a very good way. That's, what, that's, what's be, that's what's happening, sir. They're not getting to go. They're getting fed. Steven, Steven. Guaranteed, you're going to be seeing real national champion after the Orange Bowl is finished. That's exactly what you're going to be seeing. Matter of fact, let me put this off. Because, uh, wait a minute. Wait a minute here. Because when UCF did this, was it what, 2017? Yeah, 2017. Florida fans, Miami fans, and Florida State fans were looking at, was picking at UCF. Hold on. Miami fans were not picking at UCF. We were too busy complaining about how bad we suck. Well, that's but that's not, not true. That's true. I trust me. I ain't know somebody any fans who were doing it. Trust me. I, I ain't say all of the fans of these three teams. I'm just saying fans from these so, three teams were picking at UCL. Some some of who, them. Who, by the way, went undefeated and beat Auburn yep. in the Peach Bowl. In the Peach Bowl. Mm-hmm. But if you're playing devil's advocate, they're I not a – um, they're not a they're not a power five. UCF wasn't power five. Don't matter. Same five. thing as yeah, same thing as Liberty. But the and but this is the messed up part. I was wanting to know, and 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 I think this is something I had did say to you, uh, playmaker. I wanted to know when we were going to get the treatment that UCF and then before them Boise State would get. But in the in the power five conference. I was wondering when that was going to happen because I was like, there was going to come a time where you're going to have a team that runs the table, but you're going to say, mm, the resume is not good enough. And they're in the Power Five Conference. And, and and you could explain you could explain away with the with the uh, other schools. Well, they don't play the big boys. They don't schedule the big boys. Well, you can't really say that with, uh, with, with FSU because they do, and they did. And you know, the funny thing is, Cole, when they beat Auburn, guess what? Man, nobody had nothing to say. No, couldn't say they beat an they beat an SEC team. team. Couldn't say that. Yeah, they beat the SEC now. And then they had to wait a whole year. They had to wait a whole year and double overtime to thank LSU for surviving UCF the following year. Yep. Because mm-hmm. they're gonna do it again. Yep, they were about to win another against another SEC, yeah, SEC team. Yeah. Yeah, you beat the SEC team and the SEC boys like, oh, that's a big boy complain, complain. Oh, I know you. I know you. I know you ain't being serious, Steve. But some of your, some of your Florida State fans, oh, they being very serious. So, some are very serious. They are very serious about that. I'm like, oh, but when oh, UCL Steve. did it, Steven, So I'm a Texas fan. He 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 wrote, if you beat SEC in the bowl, it's because they didn't care about the game. That's exactly what that's exactly what people said when Texas beat uh, uh, Georgia oh. in the Sugar. Oh. That's exactly what they said about Georgia. Well, they were oh. interested in the game. They they really they they really didn't care. They didn't show themselves to really want to play in the game. I'm like, why are you going to crap on the team that actually won the game? That started with Alabama. And the funny thing is, you couldn't refute it because you looked that out. It was like this ain't the same Alabama. When you say they, when you say they, may not be may not be talking about the team. He may be talking about the officials. The officials. No, he's talking about the, no, he's talking about the conference. That trust me, go, you y'all both know it. I am SEC. In my blood. Well, well, yeah, and I live in SEC country too. You know that. Well, both trust years. me. You when I years. when I looked at that Alabama team that year and that Georgia team that year, I'm like, they just there. Mm-hmm. They they just there. But that's exactly. The and, and it's not the other team's right. fault. But it's Steve's the right. coaches and the players' fault. Because it's right. like that's the, that's the excuse they give the SEC team. Well, they really didn't want to be there. They really want. They really. They really had lost your goals, and they fell short. Well, they don't and, accept the bid. Don't accept the invitation. Me. And trust me, I'm looking. I'm. I'm waiting till that. I'm, I'm waiting till that list of players who opt out of bowl games for Georgia come out. I'm looking for it. Who all opting out? And I can tell you, yeah, this ain't gonna be a game. I'm looking for it because I know it. It's coming. Oh, now. 
So these are the games here, and Cole and Cool don't like this Liberty game <laughs> whatsoever. Because he's right, Liberty's being led to slaughter, and 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 that and that is and that is what this committee actually is wanting. They want to say, see, when we put the little bo- little guy against the big guy, you see what happens. The big guy treats the little guy as if the little guy asked in the ball game, "Can you pay us a million dollars so you can beat us by 50? That's what this committee wants. Go ahead, Coop. I think you were muted. Um, I was going to say, man, my thing is, I understand we have this team plays this team and it's set up this way. But sometimes... As a person, a sentient being with sense, you just say, <laughs> yeah, let's make a switch here. Like, we're supposed to do this, but we're going to say, hey, Liberty, are you okay if we put you in this game instead? And we're going to put this team in that game. You know what I'm saying? And you know what? I'm going I'm I'm uh, I'm to pull a Pat McAfee here. Despite the fact the NCAA is letting James Madison go bowling, what if James Madison have to deal with all that stuff that they had to deal with the NCAA? And they was able to focus on Avalanche State and beat Avalanche State. And then go on to beat Troy and win the Sun Belt. Would you would have put James Madison in that spot? No. Because they want to passive aggressively punish teams. <laughs> that's the that, it's, that is what I that's why I say that the NCAA has no balls. They want to passively aggressive put, they, they want to still punish Michigan, still. Yeah, you had no. But and, they don't have fact, let me take them. this down and put all the arrows on the screen because, as far as I know, this investigation, these two investigations of Journal Harbaugh are still going on. Mm-hmm. Where's the punishment at? Yeah, that point. Well, you got to remember. You got to remember, it's a new set of rules, man. There's another person that looks very similar to, to Harbaugh who is playing through his investigation, too. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm flipping sports here, but one Mr. Joshua Giddy. Giddy. He out there just playing like, hey, you know, we understand you were accused of this, but hey, when we're about 15, about 16 years, yeah, yeah, just yeah. go out there and you know, just go out there and keep playing, man. And you know, you know, you know, why, you know, why I brought that up, cool, because it was the NCAA who showed the Big Ten what they have on John Harbaugh, the reason why the Big Ten did what they did, the right? Big but you did more, the Big Ten didn't do what they do, ball the real of they self. The, the NCAA showed them what they have on Jim Harbaugh. And the big team was like, yeah, man, you might want to. Yeah, you want to. Oh, you mean, you, you, mean, you, mean like, you mean like the NFL uh, 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 showed what they had on the New England Patriots and they got a slap on the wrist? You mean like that? Oh, Lord, here we go. With the <laughs> and don't forget, We're not even his mentor in cheating We're not is the one who made sure that he understood that process. We're not even Y'all have to understand. Things. John Harbaugh has this sensei, the time of cheating and getting away with it as his mentor. So we talking. knew that there was not going to be any real punishment. If he paid attention. About All I'm NFL, saying. And he had to bring the Patriots slash Cheatriots into this. How? Lord. Harbaugh, mentored by the king of all cheaters. I was expecting you to do it. Bill Belichick. <laughs> I was expecting you to do it. I was just wondering when you was going to bring that parallel into play. I can't let that go, y'all. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But See, I can't yeah, let that's that go. The, and that's the thing. We People focus on Alabama getting in with the wrong laws. Some people focus on Texas and getting in with the wrong laws. But, hey, man, one of the programs is, 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 is uh, being investigated for uh, cheating. It's Bye, a- man. Hey, guess what? You know, you know what the argument take- was? You know what the argument was? Let them play. This is the Don't problem. punish them if they go undefeated. This is the problem that I have with the NCAA, and this is why I say they have no balls. They wanted Michigan to be punished, but they wanted to have somebody else do the punishing and, and, and have the justification. Well, yeah, well, you know, they had a great season, but Ohio State beat them. So, well, they didn't really earn the right to be there. That's what they wanted to say. Mm-hmm. But they couldn't. And then you mess around and you put it in the cell P hand who can't do nothing but do their job. Right. And 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 you don't and you and you decide you're not gonna punish the program. So I'm like, okay, well, you you didn't really want them there, but they're there now. Now the NCAA, if you did your spot, that's an open spot in the playoff. 
Now, if the Big Ten decided to say, okay, Harbaugh, you spend the rest of the year. Now, this is the question I would ask the two of you. Would they would put would they institute the same thing about Michigan as they did for, uh, Florida State? No, yeah, I can tell you why. No, that's why it didn't happen. They could have said, can, you know what? I can tell you, can say, tell you why. It's the exact same thing. It's the exact same thing that happened Harbaugh, Harbaugh State. The rest of the year. That's what they could have said. They could have said, Harbaugh, you're done for the rest of the year. If you make a bowl game, you make the playoffs, you're done then too. But you know what? Even if they did that, they would not have did what they did to Florida State. You know why? Because they're all. I can't say it. Go ahead and say it. I'm. 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 I'm gonna give you the CFP reasoning. Full, full of crap is what he wants to say. Yeah, but I'm gonna give you the CFP reasoning. <laughs> I'm gonna give but you the CFP. But, 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 but I know the word wasn't crap. <laughs> yes, it's, much, it's, the yes, much is full of crap. A whole lot of things. <laughs> See, yeah, they said that. Here, here's would be the CFP reasoning. I'm gonna show you. I ain't never gonna say it. I'm gonna show you to you. Because I'm I'm bringing that up because well, isn't one of the isn't one of the rules as to why Florida State didn't get in? It would be the same reason that Michigan wouldn't get in if Harbaugh was suspended for the rest no, of the year. No, you know why? I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna show you why. They have no reason. What, what's the, what's the final score? Oh no, I, I agree with you, cool. We we here with that because I still. No, we here. But, I do a bunch of questions. Okay, but but here's the here's the thing. Here's the thing, playmaker. If Michigan doesn't have their coach, do we know if they score twenty six points? We don't. I mean, do we know their defense? Do we know what? their defense going for Iowa? We don't. We don't. But guess what? You know what they have to say. So look, what they did. Look, look, look what they did to Penn State. Look what they did to Ohio State. Well, twenty four to fifteen was not an impressive victory. But 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 sure. I know it took place in Happy Valley. So I and plus it. they ran the ball thirty five straight times. Twenty six. Let's say it's twenty six. Michigan gets um, 19. Let's take a touchdown away. Let's say they get 19, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Say without Jim Harbaugh, that's seven points worse. Okay. And then let's say they give up three field goals. So 17 19 to 9. To nine. Okay. 19 to 9. Now you, now my interest is speaking. Now my interest is speaking because uh, yeah, I want to hear, I want to hear what the committee got to say about this and how this is going to work. Because and then. My- in my opinion, you know what they're gonna say? Maybe right. go Ohio State. But here's the problem that I that I foresee and why I call this hypocritical as well. If Michigan were to do that and Harbaugh would be suspended, guaranteed they would not institute that rule, which they should. They would not institute that rule with Michigan. Why? Because they happen to play in one of the two power broker conferences, and they happen to be one of the biggest power brokers in college football. Foul AF. Yeah. Which is why I consider what they did to Florida State hypocritical. Yep. Oh, good, though, man. I mean, you I did what you disagree. did. You showed but, me what, who you are. Once somebody show you who they are, now you know. The committee but, is a whole bunch of bottom barrel. They was like that from day one. Individuals. They said the best teams. How do you? How do we judge the best teams? How does that even? It depends. It, de- it depends. One of the ways for B is I look at teams who are undefeated because to be the to be the best, you have to be able to push back all challenges. And that's what Florida State did. Yeah. Some but, people might not look at that. Some people might do BS like, huh? You know. In their championship game with a third string quarterback, they only outscored the other team by ten points. Well, okay. Oh, if you're Ohio State, let's beat Wisconsin by fifty nine. So, so, so let me t- let me tie in, let me tie in the NFL myself in how this goes. You know how when the Cowboys they're now nine and three, how a lot of people are saying, okay, yeah, you have an impressive record, but who did you really beat? Because you beat like five last place teams, you beat trash teams to get to nine and three. You went up against San Francisco, got drugged. Yeah, you went to Philly, Philly, got drugged. You went to Philly, and you, five yards short. But um, and you get a chance, and you get a chance to play them again uh, in in three days, but in four days. But you got a lot of people who are like, "Well, you don't look all that impressive to me because you didn't beat anybody." And you got fans conditioned to put strength to schedule with the NFL. Thankfully, it's about <laughs> it's about basically. 
how many wins you got and the type of wins you get <laughs> and not how impressive the wins are. It just, college football, well, did, you, it like, did you win? Did you win or did you lose? But in college right. football, it's, it's – How somebody it's, feels about how you win. It doesn't yeah. matter. But in, but in college football, it's about, okay, if you, beat a, if you beat a team that's ranked in the top ten and if you drag, if you volleywop, if you destroy and dismantle any team lower than that. And that is an unfair way to judge how good a team is. Because to me, Florida State is one of the four best teams. Because like you like you said, cool, you only had two other programs in the Power Five Conference that went through the whole whole slate undefeated. Now you had five. And right, you know no, what? Said, no, no, you no, had eight more. No, no, and you know no, no, what? No, no, no. You had five power five. Yeah. You had you five heard, power five conferences. You heard Cole say you, you, you heard you heard Cole say, I'm a full blown Gator fan. Yes. But you can't tell me. Despite the fact they lost to Alabama, that Georgia is not one of the best sports teams in the country. I agree there. But in my opinion, I had a feeling they was going to get knocked off. The hypocrisy of the committee. Mm -hmm. I had a feeling they was going to get knocked off. And And because they got knocked off, it gave the committee the reasons to say, Alabama, you beat our number one team. And here's why they did it. So you had old Nick Saban two days before the SEC championship game was played go in the media and say it would be a crime if there isn't an SEC team that isn't allowed in the CFP. Can I put another name in there? Can I put another name in there? And I, and I have to and I have to do it. And I have to do it because he's he's on team five days a week. Hmm. And he is a Alabama fan. Mm-hmm. And he specifically said live on national television because they know who I'm talking about. No SEC team in the playoffs? That's criminal. If the committee put no put no ACC teams in the playoffs. And in my opinion, this year, it would not have been criminal because there wasn't an SEC team that made me say, wow, they really impressed me. And I'm including Georgia in that. To me, Georgia is the most impressive of the SEC teams, but they got beat by a team that got boat raced at home to Texas. So to me, I'm thinking, mm, they're, they're, they're not as impressive as I would like for them to be. So and you know, you, an and you know, the, that stands and you know the funny thing about that, Cole? When your Texas Longhorn beat them in the week two, that was like, oh, that was forever. Ain't, that's not even the same Alabama team and that's, now. A, and that, and that's, an, that's another way that the committee judges, too, when these losses take place. Mm-hmm. Florida State beat LSU week one. Texas beat Alabama in week two. Week two. LSU went down, Alabama came up. Mm-hmm. This is how it oh, was. Oh, oh, and Alabama didn't look like a top 14 too when they went down to Tampa and stunk up the joint. The previous, the very next the week. The very next game. Yeah, very next week. Oh, and they had to eke out a, uh, eke out, eke out a W against uh, Ole Miss, if I'm not mistaken, the very next week. But, but, those, but those things uh, don't top matter. 10, a top 10 matchup. But they those things don't matter. They said that Lane Kiffin was going to find a way to choke. Hmm. Those oh, things yeah, don't matter, though. Oh, you said those things don't matter? Okay. No. Not when you're in the, AC, not when you're in the SEC, it doesn't matter. I agree. Oh. All you, you got to oh. do is win the conference. And, and let, me, let me show you yeah. my unbiased. What about fourth and 31? <laughs> all you got to do is win the conference. Yeah. Remember fourth and 31? <laughs> hmm. Yep. So basically... Uh, we know next year more teams are going to get in, but the way they have it is um, if your, I five, your, your right five now, power five champions. Your top your, four have like a bye. Yeah, the top four have a bye. Top four, you, who top the four best have a bye. Five in, so you can, it's you always going to have so, at least one SEC team there. It doesn't matter if they're five and seven. Mm-hmm. They're going to be there because mm-hmm. they're in the SEC. You'd be conservative. I'm thinking it's going to be at least two, if not three. Well, I'm saying at least one, even if the best team in the SEC is five and seven. Mm-hmm. They're still gonna be number, they're still gonna be the top four. Oh, the yeah, yeah, yeah. They're still in the top four. I'm just talking about yeah. the at largest. To me, I, I, can, oh, yeah, we, I can we're talking about the at largest. I can literally see two, if not three, from the SEC, two if not three from the Big Ten. At the at large. That's six already a lot of those at large spots. Six of those at large spots are already gone. That's all right. That's 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 the rest of them because the last okay, the last okay, one go okay. to the high so, school five so, team. So 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 you and I are on the same page, cool. That's exactly mm-hmm. what I'm thinking. Yep, yes, sir. 
Yes, sir. Yeah. So uh, six, so eight, uh, eight, eight of these spots. Six of them are gone. I agree. Yeah. Eight of the 12 spots are already gone. Mm-hmm. So everybody else is playing for the other four. Okay. I'm saying the ACC if big, uh, and, and, and big 12, if they combine, like they're talking about, yeah, they'll get two of those spots, and then there'll still be two other ones. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm saying. Because no, nobody cares about the Pac-12. The Pac-12 is... Yeah, Pac-12 is, yeah, yeah, Pac is now it's Oregon State and Washington State. Well, I would say this about the Pac-12 before we get out of here. What a hell of a way to end, to end it off, because that wasn't an entertaining conference this year. And it's unfortunate that that's, that's their swan song. Probably the probably the most high-profile season they have had in quite some time. I'm going to tell you, watch that boy, watch that man in Colorado. Watch what he do in this portal and with recruits. Everybody talking about all oh, these people is, uh, you know, they're not coming. But you think about it, he had a quarterback that decommitted. If you're a young quarterback and you think you're a really good player, you're not trying to go sit behind Shadur for a year. So you're going to go somewhere else. No. Mm-mm. Right? <laughs> He's not going to be able to get a top quarterback until the 2024 2025 yeah, cycle. Like and Shadur is gone. Yeah, I'm going to say 20. That's when he's going to get a good quarterback. All right. Let's get, up, let's get up out of here because Mr. Kuma King, he got other business to attend to that needs to, that needs to be flamed. 830. 830. I just say the wrong channel. I'm so hyped. 830 tonight. YouTube.com forward slash at Eagles Elite Podcast. There's some things that need to be discussed about this past week's game. All the habitual disrespect that has been shot at the Philadelphia Eagles because they lost the game. Uh-oh. Second one of the season. Maybe and exactly. then it's still one loss. It doesn't matter if they yeah, lose by 50 or 5. It's still one loss. It's still and, one loss. and on top of that, you got the team that got beat worse by the same team. Now all of a sudden you want to chirp. They beat you worse. And not just one time, bro. They have consistently been your father with a belt when you walk into a field and play them. But you got the nerve to want to chirp because they beat us. All I'm going to say is this is a time that you're going to want. It don't matter if you ain't a fan of none of these teams. I promise you, as the host of Eagles Week Podcast, me and my co-host will give you an experience that you will not forget tonight. I'm looking forward to What team do you cheer for? I am looking forward to that one tonight. You Eagles Elite. Did you see the look on Cool's face when you asked him, no, when you threw it to him saying you got some important business to take care of? And he thought Eagles and he thought about that game Sunday. Oh, because I knew that. Oh, because tonight is his night. Tonight is Cool's night. I'm just telling you tonight. Ooh, uh, tonight I'm, I'm, is Cool's I'm, night. I'm, I'm seriously I'm looking forward to that episode, bro. I'm looking for that episode tonight, man. So, we're coming and, in uh, hot and we're staying hot. I love that, bro. And uh, Mr. Cole Johnson, the floor is yours. All right. Well, uh, you can uh, catch me on uh, Snowman in the Morning. Uh, I do that. Uh, either I am on the screen or I am behind the scenes. Uh, and that show happens every weekday morning, 10 a.m. Eastern, 9 a.m. Central. Uh, tomorrow, Thursday, Cool and Coach Hour. And tomorrow, yeah. And tomorrow we have the Cool and Coach Hour. Of course, you just saw what Cool did. If you want to get more of that. Hour number two of Thursday and every Thursday with him and Coach Dante, who those two brothers are wonderful. They, I think they're going to have a show eventually. And of course, you all get to see Playmaker every Tuesday or every Monday sometimes uh, on the show as well. Uh, and then, of course, there's Total Football Talk every Tuesday at 9 a.m. Uh, Eastern, 8 a.m. Central with my boy D. Willie, Audrey Willingham. I also uh, tag team with my man uh, Wise at Hefe. Uh, on mentality you can catch that every monday to uh 2 p.m eastern uh on uh coming media uh incorporating hey, youtube channel hey, y'all need to catch mentality wise yeah. is just different <laughs> why if you have not different. seen mentality you have done yourself a disservice yes. i'm gonna just say thank that thank you thank you yes and, and and i agree with you both yeah 
you got to watch Vitality, and if you don't, you'll do yourself a disservice. But if you do, you'll be blessed because the brothers, the brother that they know, that I know, for some reason, some way, somehow, this show brings out a different side to that brother of ours. I don't know what it is. I don't know why it is, but that's just how it goes. And but if they talk about this Ronda Santos, I'm, I know I'm going to laugh my butt up because why going to go in? And we are. Uh, as soon as I saw that, I, I, I could definitely give you a preview. In the next episode of Mentality, we are definitely going to talk about DeSantis, the CFP, how how he was goaded into embarrassingly wanting to do something from the gubernatorial seat of Florida. Because <laughs> I find it hilarious. Because if y'all thought I was going to go off, oh, why is going off? Oh, why, oh, why is it going off? And, yes, and, and DeSantis already is the uh, effing moron of the year candidate. So he's already done that. This is going to add another law to the fire. So yes, you can catch me on all those places on the Kobe Media YouTube channel. Of course, you can catch me on Kobe Sports with a Z on the Kobe Sports YouTube channel. And uh, you can find me anywhere on social media at flowcode.com forward slash page forward slash host Cole Johnson. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this has been Barry and I, Greg and I, and uh, before I get out, since I do have a veteran on my screen right now, this is Army and Navy Week, so those of you, thank you for your service when y'all go out there Saturday at Foxborough, Massachusetts, because it's not in Philly no more. That's crazy. Y'all, y'all gentlemen, y'all play a hell of a game, okay? It's Army, it's Navy. Is always the final regular season game before pro season action that literally takes place. The most, so y'all have fun the most that. important college football game of the year. I have, I have said that, and I'll continue to say that. That's why I brought it up because Cole Johnson is a veteran. Mm-hmm. So y'all enjoy that, and uh, I'll see how I will do postseason for college football. Mm-hmm. Working that one of out. one of the quick things, uh, playmaker. No Cole did not do his so justice, so I'm gonna have to do this for him. <laughs> it's not Cole Sports with a Z. It's called Spores with a Z. Oh, really, really cool. <laughs> All right. So we're working on that. Other than that, uh, we got Catch Me Doing Shooting Lights Out, which Cole Johnson has joined me for the debut episode, and that debut episode took off. <laughs> like, that debut episode, episode took off. Great episode. And uh, Catch Me There, Catch Me On Ramley Talk Thursday. We got a big one. Oof, we got a big one. So when I do that, we'll be previewing the Ravens game. It's not gonna be easy in Baltimore. Yeah, that's gonna be that's gonna be a tough one. So thank you to the cool man, cool McCain. As he get ready to as he get ready to fly some eagles down and then fly some other people after he flies. Flambe. Some people, some flambeing will be going on. Mm. Cole Johnson. He, he he does what he does. The EP of all EPs, as one of our other brothers would call him. <laughs> and y'all know me, the playmaker here. That's it for Baron Down and Gridiron. Enjoy the rest of your night. Enjoy your weekend. And uh, we let's get ready for some postseason play in college football. You just experienced Baron Down and Gridiron, hosted by down there to play Mr. Silence in collaboration with our brothers football. Bear Down the Grid on is sponsored by Liz Fanatics and Paramount Plus. If you enjoyed today's show and would like to make a donation, you can donate via Cash App at dollar sign D Playmakers at dollar sign D Playmakers. Remember, Bear Down the Grid Iron is available on all podcast directories, including Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music, iHeartRadio, and YouTube. And for Apple Podcast lovers, leave us a rate review. Let us know what you enjoy about today's episode that you're listening to. Tune in again next time for more Bearing Down the Gridiron, hosted by The Playmate.